Just jump right into it. This park run controversy that's been ongoing. Uh, our colleague Jesse Carveth, who uh, is our senior editor and does a lot of the news coverage for us, has been following this one pretty closely. Yep. Uh, we've written several stories on it. Uh, basically, let's unpack it here because it's sort of coming to an impasse right now, and it's a pretty interesting subject, I would say. Um, and I think kind of flicks at. Uh, a, a slew of issues in the running community uh, that I think are perhaps poorly understood or uh, in debate right now that uh, we can chat about a little bit here by by taking a closer look at this story. So, um, Park Run, uh, Caitlin, what's your relationship with Park Run? Have you ever run a Park Run event before? Have you ever encountered Park Run? Like, I know you're in Costa Rica, yeah, but you're an American. So, like, have you ever ever done a Park Run 5K? I haven't. Uh, I haven't participated in, in Park Run. I learned about it from reading our articles uh, that Jesse had, had yeah. put together, and I think Amber had written one a while a while back. And it seems like a great event. But I and I looked them up immediately, and I went to the to the map to see if there were any near me in Costa Rica and I couldn't find any clothes. I think the closest one was Texas when I looked it up. So <laughs> it's a bit of a hike. <laughs> it was a, it was a bit of a hike. So no, I mean I I've I've learned a lot about it but I haven't had the opportunity to run one yet. Yeah, so the the park run sort of the little quick uh Wikipedia so you don't have to have to is like uh it's a timed or at least a ha- it used to be a timed 5k time trial type run hosted in a public park every saturday started in the uk in 2004 with like a, i think it was 13 runners and a, and five yep. volunteers and then grew to this pretty big juggernaut particularly in the united kingdom um although it is in 22 countries around the world uh i'm canadian i'm in toronto i think there was there may still be a park run in toronto on a regular basis but there's a few of them around canada it's it hasn't really quite taken hold in Canada or the U.S. the way it has in in parts of Europe, uh, but it's still I'd say probably the single biggest running franchise in the world. I mean, today they've got they their site says they've got uh, nine million yeah, registered nine million park runners. runners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean that's huge. I mean that dwarfs any other like New York Road Runners events, uh, anything like that for sure. Um. So they were kind of like doing their thing for the last 19 years. Um, and I chatted with a couple of Brits cause I wanted to get kind of an inside track on what the park run means to them. Uh, and the reaction was for the most part, and this might just because I was speaking with kind of serious recreational runners mm-hmm. that they would use it as a Saturday, like a time trial. Like if they needed to test their fitness or they wanted to do kind of like um, a bit of an organized workout or like a pre-race mm-hmm. prep run. Yeah, it's a great jump... way to do a quick test, like a quick 5K test. Yeah. You want to get your best time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they jump in for that and it was a way and it was timed and it was recorded. It was time measured, recorded. Great. Yep. Um, so that was sort of how it had been used for the last number of years. And I think what's happened in the last few years, particularly since uh, the pandemic, when... Uh, at all events, even uh, charity type events like Park Run, uh, they got rocked by participation lag or or you know having to shut down for a while during during COVID, and then I think they've seems like numbers, uh, finances, uh, big influx of of donation money, but that donation money comes with kind of like pointing you in a certain direction as an organization. Anyway. In February of this year, uh, there was a bunch of issues that came to a head, um, and they suddenly pulled all their stats, all their record keeping, all of their leaderboards, all of the um, all-time fastest performances, the park run records, which were a big part of this event this thing like the age groups, the age category records, and that sort of thing as well. Top five hundred sub. 17 uh, minutes, sub 20 minutes. They had a lot of uh, information out there and a lot of info recorded. And I think there were a lot of devastated runners to see their information go poof. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so that happened in February. It caused a big stir. We wrote a story about it. Um, yep. The uh, the CEO and the founder, uh, two different people, um, sort of the 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 brain trust of Park Run, which is a, a registered charity in the UK, uh, responded basically by saying that they're kind of moving in a different direction. Uh, and then there was this bring back the stats group of, uh, of people who are runners who were, you know, committed park runners and also volunteers as well. In some cases, those who put together park runs over the years. And I think they felt like they, they had the carpet pulled from underneath their feet, so to speak. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and they were pretty <laughs> upset about it. And yeah. uh, they've been sort of fighting back. They've been pro- various protests at park run events. They've had meetings, sit downs with the uh, park run organizers. And the latest is uh, a back and forth that they had where basically park run slammed the door in their face. Uh, and yeah, I think they had a petition about 26,000 signatures or so at last check begging for the for the stats back. And yeah, yeah. They, they pretty much got shut down recently. Yeah. And we should say yeah. that there's a, a pretty complicated social de- de- uh, uh, dyna- dimension with this, uh, where in February, at the onset of this, there was some criticism that um, Park Run was not, uh, not honoring uh, um, transgender runners who were participating in the events and setting records and not managing those performances in an acceptable manner. And there was a lot of, uh, I think a lot of infighting that had gone on. And that was pointed to as a, an element that may have motivated park run to pull stats and dealing with any of this sort of like genderized stats and that sort of thing, which is a pretty complicated issue, obviously. And we're not going to unpack that in great detail here today, but I will say that I think other organizations, big, running events i look at like say for example the new york roadrunners who host and own the new york city marathon i think they've done a really good job at managing this issue where they've created a non-binary category Um, they have qualifying times for the new york city marathon so they have created qualifying times for that category they've created a leaderboard uh, on race day as well as uh, results um, and you know, you get to choose, right? Like where you slot in with things. So, uh, I think that that's empowering and an intelligent way to approach it. And I kind of baffles me that if this was a factor for park run, that they wouldn't have just adopted that sort of approach. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. They have decided to pull all stats. And what's interesting that, uh, Jesse reported this week is that Park Run's basically like doubling down. They're now saying to these people who want the stats back and the competitive element of the of the series back, they're saying like, k- kind of like, no, 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 we're, we haven't even finished going as far as we plan on going with this. Right. We're like, we're... Like their five-year plan or, some, or something that's like that. That's right. And they're almost slamming the door in their faces because they said... Um, there was a quote where they were basically saying, well, don't worry, go find another race. If you don't like our new rules, we'll have another hundred runners take over for you. That's right. Yeah, that yeah. was like a, a, a pretty brutal one. That's like um, the founder of Park Run said uh, basically like a lo- something along <laughs> the lines of I'm just trying to find the quote here. It's like yeah. absolutely brutal. Uh, it was basically <laughs> along the lines of like, um, hold on, I've got it right here. Here it is. Um, for each of the disgruntled participants, whether they are a runner, walker, or a run director, if they leave, Park Run will be another 100. There will be another 100 <laughs> runners to take their place. That's wow. uh, the Park Run founder, Simon Sinton Hewitt, uh, yeah. in a statement to the people who want the stats and competitive element of the Park Run brought back. That's, I found uh, that that was a little that was a little harsh, but and I mean I can understand yes. what they're what they're stating because they are saying that they're trying to stick to their roots and they're trying to stick to the idea of running for fun and f- making walkers and non runners and joggers and competitive runners and recreational runners and everyone feel like they have a place in park run and they want it to feel friendly and they don't want it to feel 
competitive. And I can understand that. I can understand that that's, you know, that's a great motto to have. That's a great aim to get everybody running and maybe non-runners running or walking or jogging or however you want to participate. And the runs from the photos and everything I've seen, all the information, they look so great and so welcoming just as they are. And so to have the stats for so many years and then decide to just take them out because that's their goal, I feel as though they were reaching their goal because it really looks like it was a very, or it is a very, very friendly and open event to to everyone who participates or anyone who wants to participate. Yeah, so I I had an email back and forth kind of on background with uh, one of the Bring Back the Stats uh, lobbyists. And (laughs) I was curious about kind of the the sense of direction Park Run was taking from the perspective of this group of people. And the reaction was that there, even though Park Run is a quote unquote charity, it's really being run like a corporation. It's being run like a big business. Um, apparently it has something like along the lines of 50 ish employees at this point. Okay. They take, they've taken on a huge influx of cash, mostly from government from UK government donation, uh, not donations, but like, I, I, there's no such thing as free money from, uh, um, support, a, support. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they've, they've, their organization has become, has sort of been, uh, um, energized by a huge amount of money coming in, but they're also spending a huge amount of money as well. And I imagine there's some strings to that. You know, I I imagine there's some expectation that there will be continued growth. And if you're an organization that has been around for almost 20 years and you've hit your ceiling with the kind of dyed in the wool running nerd, (laughs) it's really tough to grow from there. Right. Um, You may even have probably seen your organization and your numbers shrinking. I mean, I don't know if they make those numbers public or not. We haven't seen any public numbers, but Mm -hmm. Uh, I imagine that their challenge is to try to grow. They have corporate relationships. They have brand sponsorships. They've done stuff with brands like, like Brooks in the past. And I, I, there's, there's gotta be expectations in terms of like deliverables. It's a company effectively. Right. So absolutely. I, I think, I mean, and I love the idea, um, and everything behind it. And I feel like, yeah, if they want to grow, um, Maybe they could have done it another way. I mean, maybe this is a way that's going to invite more people, but I think there are other ways to promote uh, the friendliness and the inclusiveness of the runs, uh, maybe without taking away the stats. And But, you know, who knows if that was something that they were asked to do to make that big change and, and that this change or that this statement will actually entice more people to run and maybe the people that they'll end up losing uh, who are really interested in those stats is a small percentage uh, when looking at the whole pie. Yeah, I mean, I think, I just think it's always a mistake to turn your back on your core. And yeah. I've seen this happen time and time again over the last however many years in the running industry. Uh, this happens with brands often where they get intoxicated by this idea of this imaginary kind of would be runner that creates this incredible uh, statistical line item where it's like, X million people have run five or say they ran in a survey five times in the last 12 months. So we categorize them as a would be or sometimes runner. And then when you look at that massive statistic and you start doing the math on it, I mean, just greed takes over, right? It's like, how do we get that? Like those millions of people to come and participate in our event. The answer is you, you aren't going to because that's an ex- that's the most fickle consumer that's effectively a non runner and uh, like i I am all for trying to bring running to as many people as possible yeah and I think that in many respects that park run's doing really great work and yeah, i actually absolutely. i'm not against them going in this direction it's it's sort of their It's their corporation. It's their business. It's their charity. They can do as they wish with it. I just think it's kind of dangerous when you completely turn your back on your foundation. Uh, You lose your soul. You lose your identity, right? Um, Yeah. um, And I, yeah, I I agree with you as well. I mean, that's been their core 
the, their core, all of, there are runners in there who look forward to that, who look forward to trying to break their own records, who look forward to maybe moving up in the stats a little bit in their age group or whatnot. Um, and, you know, but my running club here in Costa Rica, our motto has always been uh, run for fun. And so uh, from the very beginning, 10, 10 years ago, we've been trying to get non-runners. It was more like runners come to the trail running community. And so that sort of like getting new people into a new sport. Um, in my case, at first, it was getting women on the trails because back, back then there weren't um, as many women running trail in Costa Rica. Now there are a ton. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I love the I do love the idea. So it's just kind of making sure you move in the right direction, but also not completely turning your back on your court and keeping everyone involved and excited about it. Yeah. I, w you mean to tell me the motto of your running club isn't uh, run for some arbitrary time? <laughs> because <laughs> that's what everybody else gets caught up in all the time right uh myself included um, yeah. and no i mean there are plenty of runners in the club who of course want their times and everyone's working on prs and getting better and better but the whole idea and i think the trail I mean, it's a whole other topic but the whole trail running community in general is kind of a more yeah. laid-back group so you know yeah, yeah run, run for fun <laughs> yeah for sure yeah and yeah so i think one thing that jumped out at me in thinking about this whole subject was I think there's a bit of a disconnect here when you're a volunteer and every week, every Saturday you're showing up first thing in the morning, you're setting up the cones, you're getting the watches ready. You're getting the, like the timing is all getting set up uh, and you're pouring your life into it and it becomes a big part of your identity. And as you and I both know, it's like running is, all about identity right and for these volunteers like basically if you're the local park run person that's a big part of who you are but then yeah, when you take ownership of that work totally. i mean that's yeah you totally own that that park run but the problem is is you don't own the park run right park run <laughs> park run owns the park run that's the you, irony yes and i think that's a really <laughs> tough tough realization when uh in the classic corporate speak they're going to go a different direction on this one. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other weird thing that comes to mind is, so one of the things, one of the details that is emerged in all this is who owns the stats, because there are all these stats, leaderboards and so on. And if you go on the park run site, they're gone. I, you know, I figured out what the URL was and I entered uh -huh. it in and it gives me the four Oh four error oh, message. Okay. The error. Yep. And then I went and I went into the Wayback Machine, which you can kind of look at previous iterations of the site that have been cached over the years. Oh, and I, okay. I went into I did a little like this little like classic journalism trick. I just went yeah, in and so went went back to like December before this controversy uh, spun up and looked at the tried to look at the stats and was able to see some of them. However, uh, the the Park Run site sensed that I was trying to look at data in a weird way and actually gave me an error saying that I was trying to scrape the data and that that's like oh. not allowed because this is park run copyright information. Right. And I was like, Oh, right. Of course. Private property. Yeah. You don't yeah. own your stats. You don't <laughs> own that time. You just put down at a major marathon or a park run park run owns that information, I guess. And who owns the data is a really interesting question got me thinking and my understanding is is park runs not willing to turn that data over to this group of people that desperately want it so that they want they want their stats yeah. yeah yeah so i think we're i think they're at an impasse uh i did ask the uh this passionate uh individual that was involved in trying to lobby to to bring the stats and the competitive element back to park run if there was anything kind of rising from the ashes of this to replace the idea of what park run used to be. And, you know, he said that it's still too early to tell, but that, that there's definitely an opportunity for that. So I'd be curious to see if there's kind of like a, a park run 2.0 that, that, that uh, emerges out of this. Yeah. Because I think I had seen that they weren't, that they were still going to send you your result and that you were may, you may um, still get the age group, result information but to an email and not public i'm not sure exactly what they've decided on but maybe it's a possibility to get some but again that it wouldn't be public you would be getting it 
you know, sent to your email. So it wouldn't be something that people could access, but you would be able to see it. What's your take on that? I'm kind of curious, like I have mixed feelings about yeah. the public nature of results. It was just a kind of a, a foregone conclusion that if you ran in a race, it was going to show up on a, I mean, yeah. long ago, it would just show up on a big piece of paper, before, like, yeah. you know, stuck to the side of a timing vehicle at the end of the race or whatever. <laughs> right. But then with and the internet, it, yeah. yeah, with the, the, obviously like this is, this is, this is aging both of us, but like with the advent of the internet, um, <laughs> that all went online and now it's, right. you know, like you can go and search for, results going back 10 or 15 years in a lot of races. Yeah. What's your I mean, feeling about like the public nature of race results? Like, are you cool with your name and time being out there in the world? I kind of feel like if I, if I sign up for a race, um, if, if I'm signing up for that and I'm doing something in a group setting with a ton of other competitors, I expect that my information will be public because I'm kind of signing almost a waiver to that by signing up for the race. I feel like if I'm signing up for the race, if I'm ready to run it, I'm ready to compete or ready to participate that everyone else is going to be able to see, uh, to, to see my stats and that I'm signing away the permission to keep that, uh, to keep that private. And I have no problem with that because if I'm running a public event, I don't mind that my information would be out there. But funny that we're talking about this because mm -hmm. I also didn't realize that when I sign some of these waivers before races and races that I've really wanted to do, uh, that you're also, be careful everyone, you're also signing away your image in most cases um, because I've run some great trail races and have gotten some great photos from some amazing photographers. And then I realize, and I've seen later down the road, uh, my photo as a backdrop of a, of a race website or, <laughs> <laughs> or even once um, just randomly looking up some, like literally Google images and I was looking up some great running quotes and I saw a photo of myself running in 80 K here in Costa Rica. And I saw this big, it was a great running quote. I forget what it was. It was wonderful though, with this big running quote next to it. Um, and my face plastered on the, <laughs> on the running quote. So I said, okay, well I should be fine with this because I oh. probably signed a waiver that said the, pho the photographers can use my image and that they're public domain. Was it, it wasn't your running, it was like a running quote from somebody else. It was like a, like oh, some yeah. classic running quote. It, it was just a, a classic running quote. I was looking something up for, for my running club. We were having an event and I was looking for some great running quotes and like trying to get inspired. And I said, Hey, that's me. <laughs> you inspired yourself. Yeah. That's, that's how did I get there? That's eerie. That's actually quite creepy. That it was it, creepy. Yeah. It brings to mind, like I, I have a similar experience it wasn't me thankfully because i'd be horrified by it but um <laughs> my my cl closest running pal and training partner uh we ran chicago in 2022 and he's a really he's a very kind of quiet low-key private person i don't think he's on social media he never makes a big deal out of his times or his performances he's a very good runner and he's also not somebody who's going to be like uh, you know, shedding a tear of joy at a finish line either. He's a very internal person. Okay. A little stoic. Very stoic. He very is stoic. like, you, okay. yeah, you look up like, uh, um, uh, uh, um, I'm blanking now, uh, the stoic guy, uh, <laughs> meditations or Marcus Aurelius. You look up okay. Marcus Aurelius and it's like my friend Ross's face, uh, chiseled in stone. But, so I guess he crosses the finish line in Chicago and for like okay. a half second, he has this euphoric <laughs> smile on his face and he's like looking to the heavens as he's doing it. And wow. I guess a photographer with a big telephoto lens spotted it and took a photo, of one of the race photographers. <laughs> Snatched <then> it up. <laughs> the following year, when the following year, when the world record is run in Chicago, there's a shot of Kelvin Kiptune <laughs> running towards the finish line in the finishing shoot, ready, almost like about to break the world <laughs> record. And then one of the giant, like 10 foot banners on one of the flagpoles <laughs> right over this guy's head is my friend Ross making this like 
angelic face he must of have euphoria. lost it oh my gosh it was incredible i screenshotted it as i was watching of the was live streaming the race and then immediately sent it to our group chat and it was like just yeah it was amazing he Absolutely was probably amazing. just dev- i would have been psyched <laughs> he probably did not feel the same he was way not not <laughs> enthusiastic so okay. word to the wise read yep. the fine print be aware be aware that yep. even if you do pay say 200 and change dollars <laughs> for your major marathon entry fee you're still yeah. signing those name and image rights uh, over right. to them <laughs> for marketing purposes and so smile smile when you see <laughs> yes. a photographer be ready <laughs> yeah and don't do the like stop your watch at the finish line thing or maybe do that oh, then they yeah. won't use your photo right yeah. so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um <laughs> yeah i think i think to kind of like to tie this in a bow, I think one thing to keep in mind or two things to keep in mind with uh, situations like this park run situation is one, uh, when you're volunteering for an event, it's, it's still not your event and yep. charities are companies. And then two, uh, there's no such thing like, like in, like in we've learned with social media, the hard way, if it's quote unquote free, that means you're the product. Right. right. Uh, that's the, 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 the tough lesson. The story. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as a free race. Yeah. 